99% of coaches will go out of business in 2024 and here is why. The online coaching space is one of the most competitive markets out there and going into 2024 the market is changing rapidly and if you don't adapt you will be left behind. So in this video I just want to talk about some of the things that I've been observing in the space over the past year and what we can expect going into 2024. So put down your phone, put this video on full screen and take out your notepad because this video has the potential of saving your business if you take action. As of today, so February 4th, 2024, there are three major mechanisms that I'm seeing that are changing the space as we know it, okay? And that is the shift away from short form content, it's increased competition and it's increased sales resistance from the marketplace. And what this video is going to be about is going to be me breaking each one of these shifts down and I'm going to give you solutions as to how you can actually ride these waves instead of getting wiped out by them. So shift one, the shift away from short form content, right? Now, we all remember the initial short form content wave in 2022, right? When every agency turned into a short form content agency and told you to get on camera and start talking about how you actually help people, right? But now the thing is that everybody is doing that. But the thing is that now that has become the norm. Okay, absolutely everybody is doing that. And if you're not, like, I, I really don't know what you're doing. Like, I really don't know what you've been doing over these past three years. But I guess you're here right now, so it doesn't matter. Um, but the thing is that people don't buy high ticket programs off of a few 30 second clips anymore. Literally anyone can get on camera for 30 seconds and look presentable, right? Especially since you can just restate what everybody else is saying, which is literally happening. Like 90% of people are just saying the same thing everybody else is saying. They're saying in the same way that the other people are saying it and they are hoping that it's going to somehow make them money. But even if you are saying something else to everybody else, even if you have your own way of doing something and you're good at what you do, people won't trust you off of 30 second clips. So what we got to do is we actually got to take this a step further. And the way that we do that is we do that through long form content, kind of like this video. Because if you look at every single guru and that's making a lot of money in the space, right, whether that's Alex Ramosi, Grant Cardone, Eamon Gaggi, Bradley Carter, aka Kinkido, um, Wes Watson or Sabri Subi, everybody is doing long form content, right? They may be posting short form, sure, but long form is where their focus is at. And there's a reason for it, right? Like think how valuable each one of these guys' time is, right? And that they still dedicate a lot of it, right? Because posting long form content is time intensive to a certain extent. They still choose to dedicate their time to posting long form content, right? They could be, I don't know, they could be scripting ads, they could be doing service delivery, doing anything else in the world, right? But they still choose to dedicate time to posting long form content. Right? And for most of these guys, their short form content is actually being automated, right? Because people just take clips from their long form and they repurpose it into their short form. Key point here is that 90% of coaches already don't make money. Okay, and that number is only going to keep going up. We are seeing a massive shift towards the two extremes, right? Which is hella rich and broke, right? And all the people on the broke end of the curve are the ones that aren't hammering long form content like these guys are. The people that are complaining that they can't sign clients are the ones that are just sticking to the short form content, making the same content that everybody, that everybody else is making, saying the same stuff that everybody else is saying, and selling the same programs that everybody else is selling. Now, short form can definitely get you to like 50k a month in this current market, obviously depending on your market, what kind of market it is, and how sophisticated sophisticated it is right like if you're in the space of helping agencies and coaches it's going to be really difficult for you to get to 50k per month just with short form content just because of how competitive the market is um if you're a fitness coach once again that market is super super com competitive long form content is going to be crucial but that's not to say that it's not doable but the thing is that getting there will be difficult and staying there and getting past there will be even more difficult without long form content and the reason is that the further you scale the further you get to a point where you need to start thinking not just about getting a few clients from somewhere but where you actually need to start thinking okay how can I dominate this market? Because if you think about it, the goal of being in any market is market domination, right? Because if you're not the market leader, which I'm going to get into in a second, um, then you are just going to get beaten by the person who is the market leader. And the market leader, aka the person that dominates the market, is going to be the person who has better client results, which isn't the topic of this video. Watch this video if you want to learn about um, my process to getting results, how you can improve your product, how I do it, etc. Um, and then two is who occupies more space on the internet, okay, aka through content. Right, and if you don't occupy that space, somebody else will, right? And if you've read 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, um, the ultimate goal is to be first in the mind. And that is your only objective because in the end, right, after markets settle, that person and then their competitor, potentially, if they position themselves as the opposite of the market leader, those two people are the only people who make any money whatsoever. And the good news is that if you're actually good at what you do and you know what you're talking about, then YouTube is actually how you separate yourself and how you become first in the mind, okay? Because most people in reality do not know what they're talking about. They're just copying somebody else, okay? Or they watched a couple of YouTube videos and they think they know marketing. And when those type of people make long form content, they automatically get exposed because you can tell that they have no clue what they're talking about. So the bar for long form content is basically set higher, right? Plus it's difficult to get on YouTube, right? Like it takes time, it takes energy to come up with a solid video. 
and most people who aren't real players in the game they're not willing to put in that time and energy and it's just too far out of most people's comfort zone so now that you're persuaded to be on youtube in order not to go broke all that's left now is jesus all that's left now is figuring how you actually come up with ideas video structure and funnel behind the content right but the good news is that i've actually made a video on that two in fact right this video right here on my channel uh, which is going crazy right now, by the way, is my strategy in detail, YouTube plus Instagram, which is what I'm using. Um, and then this is my psychological approach to content. This is more of the, um, okay, how do I get people to trust me? How do I get people to like me? How do I get people to feel like they know me? And how do I ultimately make my content convert from a more um, psychological principle-based view, okay? And now what I've just gone over could literally be a video on its own, um, but the good news or the bad news is, is that this is just a third of the video. Okay, and we have two more principles to go over. And in the end, you also realize how these three principles actually interconnect and interwork with each other, uh, which is where the real magic actually starts. Okay, so principle two, increased competition, right? This is the second shift that is happening right now. And that is purely because this niche, the coaches, coaching coaches niche, the fitness coaches niche, the relationship coaches niche, any sort of coaching, it's probably the most competitive niche in online service-based business as a whole, okay? Maybe except for e-com. E-com is also hella sophisticated, right? And if you're selling Facebook ads to e-com, that is a painful niche to be in, okay? But then again, this video is exactly how you differentiate yourself in that sort of niche, right? So every day, there are more and more people coming in, trying to be coaches, trying to be agency owners, meaning that in the prospect size, everybody is exactly the same meaning that everybody is fighting over the same prospects, meaning that everybody is going broke. And now this is bad for you if you don't know how to separate yourself from these people, okay? Obviously, right? Because we know that competition is the enemy, right? And if you compete, you ultimately end up losing. And due to increased competition, market is getting extremely sophisticated and numb to most of the claims that you try to make, okay? And a great example of this, to illustrate this point, is the fitness coaching space, okay? Or the business coaching space. But basically, everybody is doing and saying exactly the same thing. Okay, in the business coaching space, literally everybody's selling the IG follower funnel. Okay, like every single day I see a new coach that is use, using the funnel, right? And if they're using it, like that's fine. But if you're positioning it as the only funnel that works, the best funnel, and you're positioning it in exactly the same way as every other business coach out there, like, come on, man. And the thing is that everybody who is, is becoming a massive muffled ball of noise that isn't cutting through to people. Okay, you have to say different stuff to everybody else in order to get heard. According to Eugene Schwartz, who was a marketer and an author of Breakthrough Advertising, which is the book where this concept that I'm about to walk you through comes from, um, there are five stages of market sophistication, okay, which are basically the image of how many similar products to yours your target market has seen before you. And for context, most markets right now, especially fitness coaching and just coaching in general, right? And agency work too. Um, we're all in stages four and five of market sophistication, okay? Meaning that if you talk about the same shit people have talked about before you, you will get laughed at and you will get ignored, right? So you must come up with unique insights that you gather from actually playing the game, innovating, creating, and being good at the game. So basically here are the five levels of, sophist of sophistication, Right, which is, you know, when the market first gets created, right, from a group of people wanting a certain problem to be solved, you can just make any claim and people will buy, right, because they have it's a new market, right? Then there's a battle of making the claims bigger. Then you introduce a mechanism. Then you take the mechanism and you upgrade the mechanism, right? And then what you do is um, basically the market doesn't believe in any mechanisms because they've been burned too many times before. Everybody's saying the ex exactly the same thing. People upgrading the mechanisms and making crazier and crazier claims aren't believable anymore because that's what literally everybody else is doing. And then new advanced, th th this is some graphic that I found on the internet, it says that new advanced marketing strategies must be activated. But I'm going to show you these advanced so-called marketing strategies in this video. So as Eugene puts it, right, in this final stage of sophistication, your market no longer believes in your advertising and therefore no longer wishes to be aware of your product, right? And at that point, the emphasis shifts from the promise and the mechanism, right, that you are using it shifts to identification with the prospect himself. You are dealing with the problem of bringing your prospect into your ad, not through desire, but through identification. And I see this as two types of identification, okay? It's the identif identification of your prospect, shifting the focus to him. And then two, it's the identification of yourself, right? And making you the main selling point rather than your product, right? And that is how we actually build a niche of one. Right. So the way that you actually differentiate yourself, I covered this in another video, but it's true things like, you know, USPs, talking about your own story, um, having an enemy, doing all these sort of marketing tactics. I literally explained all of these in this video right here. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend it. There's also three points in that video. The last one literally covers this, right? So what you can do, just to summarize point two, right? You can watch this video and take the tactics from this video. You can identify your prospect and shift the focus to him in your ad, 
not your product, but your prospect, right? Whoever understands the prospect the best will ultimately win. What we're trying to do is we're trying to answer the question of how does the market feel, okay? And when you do that the best, your prospect will automatically assume that you have the solution, right? And then what you can also do is you can follow the steps in part one, which is YouTube, right? Like if you post on YouTube, you will automatically differentiate yourself from everybody else, right? Because nobody else is doing it. You will have built a way more superior connection with your prospect than everybody else. And you will have just naturally demonstrated so much personality that like the people doing short form content won't be able to compete. Um, and then you could also implement the principles and the strategies that I talk about in state tree, which is our state tree principle tree or part tree, which is increased sales resistance, right? Which I'm going to get into now. So due to market sophistication, right? And now how you, you can see how all this actually, you know, intertwines and interconnects together, right? Due to this market sophistication that we talked about in step two, right? If you come off as salesy in 2024, especially in a space that's heavily based on building a relationship and connection with your prospect, like the coaching space, you will be ignored, okay? Because people are getting pitched over and over and over and over again by people just like you, right? So you need to actually stand out, right? Which is parts two and one, right? But also what you need to do is you need to lead with value in every single interaction with the prospect, right? Now, let me, sh let me show you something, okay? If this is you, you need to stop, right? Like if you get a DM from someone, right? Or if you're having a conversation with someone and you have this AI bot that just sends them this random spammy text, no matter what they say to you, Right, like if they're interested in your offer, sure, you can have a keyword and then you can send that after send that to them after they respond with the keyword. Right. But if somebody's just having a normal conversation with you, why are you sending this shit like four times? Okay, I am I'm not interested in signing up to your webinar or whatever it is. Or I'm just trying to reach out to someone, right? I'm just trying to connect, right? Build a relationship. I'm not even selling anything, right? I'm just trying to network with people. And then um these people say, like, I I'm excited to see your interest in growing your brand. Do you mind if I ask a few questions? Bro, I never wanted to buy anything from you you are being super, super silly right now. And that just decreases all the trust that I have in you, right? Because you show that you don't even care about me because you have these automations going out to try to sell me in our first ever interaction, right? And at the space, which is the coaching space, you cannot afford to do that, right? The whole point is actually connecting with your audience. And then he just keeps going. And then in the end, he hits me with the, would you be opposed? Like, it's like, okay, come on, bro. Um, and then if this is you, you also need to stop, okay? I just like, hey, brother what is this okay um for context i was talking with this guy earlier right and he he didn't have this automation going out right like we, we chatted i sent him over a video right and then i, I respond like i follow up with him saying hey brother and then i get this shit okay and then i'm like what did you think of the video and it just hits me oh, have you registered right like if i was a prospect i would be so turned off by this even if i wanted to buy beforehand okay so like, I want to present you a crazy ass concept that you may just think I'm insane for, okay? But not everybody who goes to DM you is looking to buy immediately, right? And not everybody who DMs you wants to sign up for that webinar that you have in your bio, okay? Some people just wanna have a conversation with you. And even the people who initially may have wanted to buy from you, they will get turned off when they get asked for the fifth time to give you their email when they just want to speak to you and see if you're a genuine human being. Okay, if you are so distant from your audience that you cannot even have an honest conversation with them, you do not deserve their money. Okay, because that is all you care about. So the lesson here is right in terms of like actual marketing strategy. Um, and this isn't just a conclusion I've just came to on the spot, like I've actually split tested all this. Um, the best performing outbound campaigns, the best performing ads and anything and everything in between have been the ones where you lead with value. Okay, the more you delay the ask, the bigger the ask can be. Okay, and the goal is to actually never ask in the first place, right? You you message someone, you give them value, right? Even when you're asking them to hop on a call, you're not even selling them anything. You're just asking to provide value on the call, right? And then on the call, when you present the offer, you're not even asking them to buy, you're just presenting your offer and you're like, this is value, right? Do you wanna be a part of it or not, right? You're not even selling at that point. But when you start selling from the very first interaction with a prospect, it's like, come on, bro, like, come on. Are you a coach or are you a machine or something? Like, I don't know. All right, never mind. Um, let's get back to it. I've gone off track again. Where was I? Um, the more there is, the more relationships you build long term, the more goodwill, the more word of mouth, and the more connections you will have, and that means that ultimately you will make more money. And the way that I'm actually implementing this and how you can too is by giving in every one of your marketing efforts. Okay, ads you give a free asset. Outbound, you give a free asset. Content, you give absolutely everything away. And if you actually do this, you will build so much goodwill in the marketplace that in fact, it will be difficult for you not to grow, okay? Because word of mouth compounds more than anything else, right? Uh, I didn't finish scripting this video, but what I was gonna say here is that only the time you should ever ask someone is when presenting your offer, potentially on the call, right? 
but even then the prospect should be the one asking you um you know for, like if you structure your sales script right the prospect is going to be the one asking you for the um, price and then they're going to be the one saying yes you like you just have to drop your price and then they say whether they want to be a part of it or not right but that is basically what i wanted to um go over in this video let me know if this was valuable this was hella long um let me know if you actually found it helpful or not if you did drop a like subscribe um if you want to see if i can help you scale on a done for your model um then you can book a call with me down below if you don't know what my offer is about yet i'll do up a video so you can actually check it out and see if this is something that you may want and um yeah that's all i wanted to share with you guys today i'll see you soon